Welcome to Vanishing Gates. I'm Jay, and these are the lugubrious Jack. <laughs> Off with the lugubrious again. God and me. I am Katie Cat. I thought we moved on from lugubrious. No, we're back. Anyway. Bring it back like four flats on a Cadillac. <laughs> it's too early for this shit. How was your guys' this week? <sighs> it's okay so far. I mean, uh, my, my son's driving me nuts. But he does the cutest thing. I don't know what it is, but uh, when he gets tired, and I think it's just me not understanding, because you know he's, he's really, really autistic. So he's like uh, the steering wheel on a pirate's underwear. I don't know what that means, but sure. I don't know, but it's driving me nuts. <laughs> anyway, so nobody, he does this thing where he like comes at me whenever he's I tired, and I did I don't rec <laughs> I get it, but I don't I don't recognize the signs that he's like he's trying to get oh, my attention for that. <laughs> so the other day he falls he falls asleep on my arm. And I didn't, I didn't realize he was, like, just wanting to, like, be near me. And I sat down on the couch, like, sat, and he just put his little head right here. And he just holding his little tabby wheel, like that. And I was like, all right, this little mother... <laughs> Spent all day, like, all day pissing me off. All day getting into shit. And he just sits down for, like, half a second, falls asleep on my arm, like... You're like, aww. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're cute again. You shut it's up. It's all cured. Never mind. You're being quiet. You're, you're too cute. adorable. I can't be mad at you for more than 10 seconds anyways. So I'm going to do something I don't normally <clears throat> do. I haven't done in the... As a long-standing rule, I don't give... Spoiler... Or not spoiler. It's, I, don't, I don't do the whole um, trigger warning thing because I, I don't believe in them. Uh, this time I'm going to. If you are of a... If you have a hard time hearing about things that happen to kids of a really bad nature, you're going to want to probably not, this because we're going to be talking about uh, this new documentary that just came out. It's, it's not quite Quiet true. on set. So it's called Quiet on Set. And, uh, anyway, you were saying? Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your, your introduction there. That's okay. I was just saying, we have done spoiler alerts before. Like, when we talked about anything, that was, seldom. anything that's involving, like, sexual, uh, things like that, that could be, like, assault, or things that basically a nature that's like anything that can be solved like uh, sexual assault or anything like that. We usually yeah. don't. We usually don't say, "Hey, you might want to watch out." We usually have a title, and we expect you to read the title and the description. Just uh. yeah, <laughs> viewer discretion advised. If you haven't seen yeah this the docu docu series or you don't know what you know. Yeah, we're not going to approach this in our normal it. jokey, jovial, make fun of it nature because this is something that's really disturbing. So yeah. if, you, if you don't want to watch this one, hit the next one. Uh, but still like the, the thing and comment in the post, please. We, we always like that. Don't yeah. forget to subscribe or whatever it is on YouTube. Um, so basically, if you haven't seen this documentary yet, it's airing pretty much everywhere but Paramount+. Plus. There's a good reason for that. I don't know if it'll ever... Nickelodeon. It's going to air on Nickelodeon? It's about Nickelodeon. It's about Nickelodeon. Um, it's a hint. It's about something that went on with Nickelodeon, dur around Nickelodeon, under the, the auspices of Nickelodeon. Um, Nickelodeon has since frequently said they do not approve of what has happened in this situation, that they have done everything they can to make sure people are safe. Yeah. But let's go ahead um, and kind of give an overall, Katie, I'll have you kind of dig into it first. So, an overall, like an overall of the whole thing? TLDR kind of version of it real quick. Too long, didn't read? You're giving me a big task here. <laughs> okay. Not really. So, um, it's about, it bases around Dan Schneider, who was basically the creator, producer, director of every major, like, 90s into the 2000s Nickelodeon show. Dan Schneider is the pervert. Yes. He was basically, <laughs> like, South Park Joe. He was basically, like, most of our childhoods. Like my childhood, anyway. I grew up yeah. on his shows. Yeah. Our I, childhood. I grew up on all that. The Amanda Show, Drake yeah. and Josh, Zoe oh. 101. Mm -hmm. um, what was another show? The one with the twins in the hotel on Disney. Zach and Oh, Cody. no, he didn't, oh, do that that he didn't do that no, one. No, the other guy was He on must have been like yeah. just at the end of my, when I started watching. Like, no, he was, he was the starter of all that when I was a kid. Because, yeah, I watched the all, OG, I all that. Like the, the old ranch show and stuff like that. Like there's He a bunch did of so many shows. He made so many shows. He was huge. <coughs> literally. Yeah. So this is multiple multiple literally, he was huge. This is a doolap. So yeah. this is going to kind of tie into what we talked about last week. A little bit because we went off about something about this like last week. We'll yeah, talk about Hollywood kind of. We talk about the Hollywood thing. Yeah, I know you've been thing. waiting. Starting to understand. I've been now. Wait, I know you've been waiting, chomping at the bit to talk about these creeps for a minute. But we're gonna go into this documentary first before we start putting our own little spin on things. Got it. Um, yeah. it, it 
You want to continue with it? Or? You go. You okay, go so basically it follows at the beginning Dan Snyder's, like, rise into popularity, um, talks about his childhood, you know, or his, his high school years, his formative years. He was an actor. He was an actor. He was in, um, yeah. in the uh, 80s. Head of the Class, which I used to watch back in the day. Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot he was on it. And anyway, he became a writer and then a, a producer, uh, no, a showrunner for whatever, a director. And all that was his first big steel stick with uh, Nickelodeon. And as we said, we all watched that. It was like Saturday Night Live for kids is how it was marketed. Literally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sketch comedy for kids. A kid-friendly Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Although I don't think it was live. It was like pre-recorded, obviously. They did some live stuff later on, I they think. They had a live audience. Uh, not at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> they had a live audience. And, uh, and um, sorry. No, go for it. I was just going to say, um, looking back at the show, like them showing clips and stuff, some of the skits that they did on there were so inappropriate. Yeah, and we'll we'll get into that slowly. Yeah. It's just striking you now, like stuff I've seen. Like, uh, well, when I was a kid. <laughs> I was like, so here's what chafes yeah, like, my like, here's what chafes my nuts about this. For many years, I've been saying that these people making these shows have a fetish for kids. Oh yeah. Now I didn't really get on the Q on in the Q and in train about the whole freaking. Um, we briefly talked about it, like, last couple of shows. It's come up, the adrenochrome drinking vampire people in Hollywood. That's so um, I never jumped on that train, That's... but there's always been a bunch of sick people in these powerful situations. I mean... Now, to clarify, before we go any further, I want to say right now, Dan Schneider in this show so far, see, this fifth episode has not been released yet, he is not being accused of physically touching or hurting any kids. Mostly it's just his behavior in general. Emotional abuse. Towards yeah, towards the, kids the actors, the, the young, actors, the, the yeah. kids, the little kids. Uh, inappropriate sketches that he wrote and produced that he thought were the greatest. Um, his humor being parted in, and then how he treated his right and the females on his writing staff. The two gals that worked there were Definitely just treated horrendously. Did not like women. <laughs> and and then eventually how he got to be a real tyrant on the set in general. Yeah. Um, it does get much darker when it talks about a couple other people. Absolutely, power corrupts. Absolutely. So the first, go ahead. Well, as I say, I, I to, as a preface to this, uh, if I make some smart ass comment or something like that, I have not seen it, so I don't know the seriousness of this. It's very or any of that stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna do my normal stick. Because it's just who I am. I, I deal with things through comedy, so if I'm offensive because I've said something... Well, we're going to say offensive shit. I mean, I've already made one joke um, today. Yeah, but, made a couple you know, <laughs> yeah. What I was going to say is it doesn't really shock me too much that how, how things... Are. Like, look at look at fucking Shia LaBeouf. Oh, God. Dude, dude went down wreck. a spot. Uh, yeah. Amanda Bynes. Like, that, she's a big part of this. She's oh, a big part I of this, fucking, what we watch. The, yeah. the one thing I will say is there's actually one person who made it out of, out of that era that I could say actually made it out safe. And that was because her parents were the only parents that see apparently in all of Hollywood and in, in child acting that actually gave a shit about their child. They set her money aside. They helped her out. They stuck with her, her mom and her dad. And that was Hillary Duff. I was, She's the I thought, yeah, I was only say that. fucking one because her yeah. parents were not taking anybody's shit. They wouldn't let her go to parties. They wouldn't let her do the rap shows. They didn't leave her with nobody. They watched her like a fucking hawk. They didn't take her money. Should. They didn't steal her money. They put it aside for her as she grew up. They really, like, they stuck she, by her as parents. She didn't do the Lindsay Lohan thing or the Amanda Bynes thing. She didn't. Yeah. So, that's the thing, too. Like, she's happy. She's got a family. She's a mom. She loves her life. Yeah. Like, fine, so, man. it goes into this Amanda Bynes thing. And they talked about a couple of people. Who are, so, it seemed like Dan Schneider would find one person that he really clinged to. And it was always a very, very young girl. Mm-hmm. That he felt that he could sculpt and shape their like, talent, quote very unquote. young, like 12, 11, 12. Spending way too much inappropriate time on set. Like, I have this thing. My kids have friends come over all the time. When they come to my house, I come out to the studio. My house and my studio are not in the same building. It's on the same property. It's detached. It's detached. Yeah. When one of the kids comes out, boy or girl, I my hackles go up, just naturally. Because I'm protective of them. When they're, first of all, they're under my jurisdiction of protection like I have to protect them while they're here and I'm not gonna, but I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I could be accused of inappropriate behavior or something's going to be misconstrued that way I have a very big rule about it to the point where one of my daughter's closest friends my, my wife had to explain to her hey this is why he stays away from you when you're around he kind of vacates the area I pay attention to what's going on but I, I give them their space and, and that's why. And she had to explain it to her. Because I wasn't going to sit and have a conversation with this young girl mm. on my own. That's inappropriate. Yeah. And any grown man should fucking know that. 
Just yeah. to clear, Dan Snyder doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, it, and he never did. He doesn't have the understanding of the boundaries of what adults should have, which is we have nothing in common. Yeah, I I did not just leave diapers yesterday. I currently have more, you know, bills to pay and shit like that, and you just need to make it through elementary school. Get away from me. <laughs> well, it's, it's I like, want to yeah. spend time with you. You're not yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's like, like they, don't stand so close to me by the police. That song stuck with me, man. Like, because that shit, Sting lived that when he was like a math teacher or something at no. an old girl's school. He wrote that, that song about That being said, that. it's okay yeah. to be a mentor yeah. to people, like if you're a teacher. Absolutely. Things like that. It's, 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 there's mentorship and stuff like that, and there's something that's always okay. But if you have someone who's singling out your kid and always with them, like in, in those moments, close, yeah. get, get in a bit there and just kind of figure out what's going on. Talk to your kid. Make sure everything's safe and fine. And then talk to the person and be like, hey, a little too much one-on-one time. Well, that's the other thing, too. Like, one thing, like, if they need a ride and my not available, hey, can you give so-and-so a ride? I said, yeah, kid, but you're coming in the car with me. My, my daughter gets in the car with me. Like, or my son, if it's their friend. I, I almost never will be seen with a kid that's not mine alone in the car. And if they are, they're in the back freaking seat. Nope. I don't yeah. care how old they are. And it's not just that. It's 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 not just the fact that, you know, we're trying, you know, the, the protecting yourself thing. It's them. They need to learn that you do not get in a car. Boundaries. With an adult. Yeah. Whether you know them or not, the person, what's the most common saying, which is the person that will hurt you, the, the, the person more likely to hurt you is going to be someone who's close. And we're going to get into that here in a minute. That's um, a big part. Yeah, that comes up real soon. Yeah. The reason I bring all this up is because... Pretty soon, like really soon on, you see, well, there's parents on the set, okay, but the parents are frequently separated from those kids on the set. They're shooed away, and the show writers and the people, they sit and talk to these kids when the parents aren't around. Yeah. And the kids start to trust Dan Schneider, especially, as like a dad figure. like Mentor. Uh, and then weirder yeah. and weirder and more like cult-like as it goes along. Not that the kids were part of a cult, but he does some very inappropriate things uh, between racial freaking... Um, not profiling, but he, he definitely, like, the token black kids on that show are put directly in the spot exactly where you'd think for a stereotype. Yeah, and, and not he treated in a good way. them differently than the and white treated kids. them way, with yeah. way less respect and dignity. Yeah. Um, and he, of course, he denies all this to clarify. He, yeah. His fat lying he ass denies, denies all everything. of it. everything. There, yeah. <laughs> there is definitely something to be said for the fact that, like, in the early, up to 80s, up to the early 2000s, that a lot of, like, producers would do that. They would think that this was a great place to like shoehorn someone in, and it's like they're just a kid. It doesn't matter what they look like or where their background is. Give them a chance. Don't fucking shoehorn them. Well, so there's this. The next we want to talk about Dan Schneider aside. It starts getting really, really icky when there's this dude, uh, Jason something or another. I think it started with him. Uh, Jason. We want to look that up real quick because I want, because it pisses me off first of all because I share a name with the little bastard. I know, right? <laughs> but this guy was so sick. He gets busted for being a straight up chomo. <laughs> And he made himself look so friendly and yeah. nice and, oh, you know, walking the kids around and showing them around. And, and this isn't some older, sloven-looking dude. This is a clean-cut young man. He looks nice. He had, yeah, he, and he made friends with the parents, and he wanted to know all about their lives. And he was a, um, a liaison of some fashion between the actors and the set. And so he would go around and be directly Jason involved. Jason Handy. Jason Handy. Yeah, because that's not a name of a pedophile if there was one. Yeah. Handy. Jason Come on. Handy. But the, actually, what, what you're saying right there kind of goes back to what I had said earlier about the clown house, or last week, about the clown house thing. This kind of fits in with that uh, Victor Silva who did Jeepers Creepers, which is, um, you know, he got caught on set doing it, and he basically got no time. Yeah. Oh, you're going to like where this is going in the opposite direction. Yeah, keep on. So <laughs> this freaking guy, Jason Handy... Still Which is him. interesting. How did I not yeah. remember that? I know, right? <laughs> this guy gets busted, and <laughs> there was a laundry so list of kids that he so had bad. victimized. Yeah. What it was is there was one very, very young girl that, when she was like nine, he would be in her room playing video games alone somehow. Her name was Brandy. 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 It didn't yeah. say her last name. Did I don't yeah. know if it did, but I'm not going to say it. Yeah, she I'm clearly sure. didn't want to be involved yeah. in the documentary. I have zero respect for Brandy's mom, to a degree. Uh, and the reason being is because she looked at an email this guy had sent this girl. She was, no, Brandy wasn't the one that he was that was touching. She was she got a, she didn't end up that direction. What happened was Brandy was the one where he sent her a dick pic of him stroking himself, and she freaked out, shut the computer down, and ran to her room crying and upset. It was an email. And her mom they said, were "Why?" Emailing yeah, back, back in the days of forth. email, yeah. when that was how pedophiles got. And she you. was telling, and sorry to interrupt, but she was telling her mom, 
oh, Jason, he's like really nice, and he tells me what he's doing, and like, talking she, about church and stuff. Yeah, with people she, like praying with and people. He's and he's gonna Bible be a studies. friend and get me into other shows and whatever. Yeah, he and promised then, her the the golden candy pieces of of yeah. success, which all these sick fuckers do in Hollywood. Look at Weinstein and everybody. Yeah, and um, so. The Brandy girl avoids it because the mom finds out. The mom sees this picture and decides not to call the cops. And this is where I lost all respect for this woman. If it was me, I would have immediately First of all, lady, you are part of the fucking problem. I know that you're worried. I know you're scared. I know there's financial stake in it, which makes me even more disgusting. <coughs> Anyone that's going to put money above their kids to me is garbage. You're just as bad as a pedophile. Fuck off. I will tell you that to your face. You're disgusting. What? Sure you were scared. No one might believe you. Who cares? You're going to sacrifice your kid's dignity... Like, fuck you. Yeah. There is, no, there's there is, no excuses. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm jumping the gun want here. To. If I'm jumping it's the gun, if I'm jumping the gun, I'm jumping the gun, whatever. <laughs> but um, if I am, just you can cut me off real quick. Tell me what we're going to talk about in a second. But I know that that's something that happens very often, in, especially with children actors and stuff like that. Is um, when you when you look at your your Britney Spears is your yeah, look at her mom, Hillary Duff. When you look at all these people, you have to realize what's happened to these children is. They, they, had, they, a lot of them. They were in. Uh, I think Britney Spears' dad was an actor, right, or something like that. He was, he was in her music. Mom was a, her Spears mom was a, yeah, uh, something. Uh, someone was something. Her mom was like a beauty pageant queen or something. But like mostly, that, when you see these remember. breakdowns, this is like, um, look at um, vicarious living. Is look at, look at Miley Cyrus, right? Her breakdown is is totally different from the breakdown that you're going to be seeing with these other people totally we're talking about. Yeah. Because her breakdown is, I was a child star and I don't want to be shoehorned in there. And yeah. so she went the opposite direction. And also for drugs. Her own hey. Drugs. She, started she took partying, her own. Basically. She took her yeah. own path as she got older. It she wasn't. She said, "I don't want to be seen as I'm, Hannah Montana. I, I'm an adult." From what I understand, like, there, I've yeah. never heard Billy Ray Cyrus or his his family ever let her involved in the same way. I'm pretty sure she took her own path later because they wouldn't uh, let her do those things. I don't know. Much about I don't know she like yeah. she met somebody who was a rapper, and then they. That's when everything turned around for her, and she kind of formed into that stuff. It was um, when she got older. That's when that took hold. But so. When you talk about these these child stars, a lot of them, their parents, um, I can't remember, I was watching a documentary years ago, and they were talking about children stars when they go in and they do auditions and stuff like that, and essentially, you're, you're selling your kid. And yeah. they're like, you're not going to be on set, Literally, yeah. you're not going to be able to talk to them, you're not allowed to be, and, and these parents are well, just the, okay with this. So in, Okay, so the rule at Nickelodeon was the parents were allowed to be on set, <clears throat> they were supposed to be on set. There was a law saying the parents should be on set. It was the rules and regulations. Didn't always happen. So in this situation, though, this girl sees email, refuses to call the cops. What happened was, now this asshole's still out and about, and he ends up straight up raping a nine-year-old. Nine or ten-year-old. He gets <coughs> he's making out with her when she's nine years old, playing video games, and then straight up which, rapes her. Which was confusing to me and my mom, because I was watching it with my mom. We were like, why was he in her room with because her alone? He, okay, so this is how these predators work. They establish trust. They get into a point your where parents. your income's involved. It doesn't yeah. matter. People start to trust you. You start trusting people. Think about it. You trust family members that turn out to be creepy. You remember, you remember last week when I told you that it, um, I was talking about a, a political thing. We're not going to get political, but I'm just mm -hmm. going to bring back to the point of this, which was uh, I talked about like the, the assassination thing that happened potentially mm -hmm. to a person, and I said that everybody gets really desperate in the time of need and financial crises. Mm -hmm. What they do is they just find a mom and dad who's been poor for a long time. They have a single kid that they're very interested in who has talent or looks or whatever they're looking for in their creepiness. Mm -hmm. And the parents are desperate. What are they going to do? You're about to make a multi-million dollar contract, tens of thousands of dollars a week for your child to act, and all you got to do is sell your soul to the devil. Okay, so... And this, they're so willing to do it. This yeah. scumbag, the cops finally catch this guy. They call the mom of the brandy, the brandy and who, the one who refused to call the cops and allowed this to go on. And that's, how, that's exactly how I frame it. And I'm not going to change that. Nobody else is going to change my mind on that. It's you absolutely You're mad fault. at me. It's her fault. It's not her fault altogether, but it's her fault she didn't do something about it. Me, yeah, I agree. It's, it's lack of moral fiber is can what I, it is, and it's I, disgusting and spineless, and I hate it. I have no yeah. respect for people like that. Sorry, I know I'm talking it's a lot. It's like these assholes who take videos of people getting beat mercilessly yeah. to clown online. You're just as guilty. You should be in jail, too. Fuck Let you. Me, like, the one thing I always say, like, I know people who have been, um, uh, who were assaulted as children, and... Or had been in situations where people have done horrible things and they did nothing, and the people are out and about still walking around. Mm -hmm. I just want to say something that I, I said to them, and these are people I care about and people I still have that are still my friends. But I've been very blunt with them, which is anything that happens after that point because you didn't say anything can be tallied as part of your part. Exactly, mm -hmm. because you didn't say you're part of it. Part you of are it. to add to that problem. You're a, you're a co-conspirator. Co-conspirator. Whether or not no fucking defendant. You wanted to because you were scared or because you didn't do anything. 
realize something. That person, if they did something to you, they're going to do it to and someone see, else. Okay, so not to bash too much on this one gal, because she's not even the worst cog in the wheel. But I just wanted to get that out there, you guys. You have a responsibility to your children to defend them, period. That's all there is to it. If yeah. you put yourself before them, you're a problem. Or you should rethink yourself if, you're, you're, if that's oh, how your I'm, mindset is. I'm worried. I'm scared. It's like... Good. This, life is hard. But it's, yeah. Worried about what? What are you scared of? First off, it's your, it's your child. It's your, it's your child. But it's not just that. Think about it in a string. It's like, like, if this guy had gotten caught sooner or someone done something with a lot of these guys in Hollywood, they got caught sooner. How many people would have been How crying? many people were saved? How so, many kids were saved? It gets so bad exactly. that they call this woman and they say, well, we found baggies for each one of his victims or the, the people, the girls that he was stalking. He had, like, personal effects of theirs, letters they had written him, one girl's panties, other things like he that. He had baggies that they went with into. each of their names on yeah. it. He had child... Yeah, child pornography, pornography on the, uh, of on his some of the girls, yeah, and he, oh, he had his horrible. journal. They were reading excerpts from his journal. I guess I'm just a pedophile, and now it's taking over, and it's, I'm just not going to fight anymore. And and I'm he, gonna... he says, I'm looking at this point to find someone to rape and victimize. The only he point, literally said that. The yeah. only time I've ever, journal. I've ever cheered on a pedo <clears throat> was when he did nothing, and what happened was, he had done nothing, and he had thoughts about like touching his niece because he kept getting she kept getting left over at his house watching while his sister went to work, and he locked himself in the fucking room. He wrote a note saying, "I'm going to hurt her. I don't ever want to hurt her." And he put a fucking bullet in his head. Not to go that far. <laughs> We're trying not to do that. Sorry, but, but that's the only time I've ever said, "Hey." He passed tense to himself. He did the right thing. <laughs> he yeah. made the right decision at the right. Well, time. yeah, he solved the problem before being the problem, and that's good. I'm not suggesting do that, because he could have just seen a psychologist. That probably would have been a better I mean, way to go. At least he was aware. But so, to back, continue on, though, yeah, back, back let's reel it back in. This guy, what did he get? He got, like, how many months? Or a year? He got six years or six something? Six years for ruining yeah. a child's life permanently. Man. For six years for having all that yeah. porn and, and pictures all that shit. and so, shit. That's not even as bad as the dude I was talking about last week when I talked about Victor Silva. Was he got 15 months and they caught this, him on tapes with doing that stuff. This gets worse. Like, yeah. oh, it gets worse. Okay, Pull this guy's name before I forget it real quick, will you? Jason. The guy we're about to talk Brian about. Brian Peck. Brian Peck. Jesus, that was quick. So well, this, how could I forget it? I watched this it. Creepy ba- I forgot it. This creepy bastard, Brian Peck. I didn't forget Peck. that guy's name. <laughs> so he was a an acting coach. Then he worked for uh, all that and the Amanda Show and stuff like that. And uh, oh, this guy makes me sick. This guy was Pickle Boy, if you remember all that. Uh, and if you didn't think that this show, and like I said, I used to get I shit like because people this. said that you're you're thinking too much into this. They're not trying to sexualize kids. I said you're fucking wrong. They're trying to normalize sexualizing children. <clears throat> I said that's not true. And then I saw the Pickle Boy skit that I'd forgotten all about, and it's Ray Romano for some reason Which I as a guest. Totally Ray Romano because they used to have adult guests on the show yeah. there and all that. And Pickle Boy walks up with a big plate of pickles and. There's a fucking glory hole in Ray Romano's dressing room. And he goes, man, I'm really hungry. And Pickle Boy shoves a fucking pickle in the glory hole. And Ray Romano... Slowly, by the way. Slowly starts... slowly puts it in the hole. Yeah. Very suggesting. And then Ray Romano, of all people. I don't know what's up with this guy. Maybe we should look into his background a little further, Ray. I like Uh, everybody loves Raymond, but I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if the kids do after this. I sure as hell don't. He starts, like, mouthing the pickle very suggestively before. But this is a grown man, not a kid who's been talked into it. So the pervasiveness of Hollywood and children is well and alive, and it has been for a long time. So I told you so. I'll get it out of my system now because it's going to get worse. There was one scene that I saw that, uh, or one thing that made me, like, not want to watch the documentary because I was like, oh, maybe it's just... It's just people blowing shit out of proportion because this, this lady was talking about um, the dude with the big nose or whatever. Like the nose dude. Oh, no. When you see it, it's not <laughs> blown out of proportion. The character knows Because the way she explained it, he just sneezed on someone. Like, it's no, just it's not what happened. Sneezing on so we're talking about the nose boy, nose boy incident. So one of the token black kids on the show, really, really good kid, funny kid, mm-hmm. they dress him up as nose boy and they put noses on his shoulders. Noses look exactly like... Wait, let's... Big black penis and balls yeah. on his shoulders. Can we just clarify real quick that he, he's a token to them, right? <laughs> no, that's just how he uses the term. Oh, that's how. I'm going to regurgitate yeah. the term. Oh, it was the term. He says it. That's how they all say it. I'm going to say okay. it the same way. I don't yeah. care. It's it's how it's what the terminology means. It's disca- I don't agree with it, but it's what it is. And then they have a big proboscis st- uh, on his nose, big, big nose. fake nose. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's doing a thing and he sneezes and it pans over to the gal and it's just a fucking cum shot. Is all it looks like. Just like a facial. And then they go to the writers talking about it, the, girl, the women, and they said, yeah, that's what they said it was. 
when they were talking about it. It looked like that. You'd hear people whisper, yeah. it looks like that. Well, that wasn't the only time, though. There's another one on that Zoe 101, Zoe 101 where it was the, the same thing. the squirting of the... But we'll get there because we haven't got yeah. to that part right. of the timeline yeah. yet. And I don't want to get into all the details here because I want to talk about this asshole Brian Peck. Yeah. Oh, God. He's so Brian Peck wild. is the... I don't know what's up with this guy. I should have looked into it. That's what the notes I was going to look into, where he's at now, and I didn't think about it. Yeah, I didn't look that up either. Um, yeah. if, so, <laughs> Brian Peck is this guy. Um, uh, here, the real, the, the one you feel the worst for in the show is, is, is the Drake kid. Drake Bell. Drake Bell. He's just a few years younger than I am, and this guy looks older than me, and I do not look well for my age. <clears throat> uh, he's gone through a lot of it, What he went trauma. through with this Peck guy... <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, I'm not going to say everything that happened, but it boils down to Drake Bell's dad was an, uh, is an awesome guy. Yeah. He is a guy that you feel terrible for this entire thing. Yeah. Because he kept a fucking eagle's talon around his son the entire time he was on set for any of these shows. Thank God. And they said, hey, you know, Drake is yeah. super talented. There's this guy that works for the show, uh, Peck who is a an acting coach and stuff and, and he'll help him with his lines and stuff so his dad goes okay fine and so they start working together and he's helping him progress in the show and he's dialogue getting more coach. dialogue coach yeah. yeah and he's helping him out or whatever and then his dad starts noticing this guy's getting a little too friendly with him and then it cuts to a scene while they're talking about how he's noticing him touching you know drake and stuff really suggestively if you're not thinking about it, you wouldn't notice it. Well, Me, he, I immediately get red flags when I see shit like that just because I'm a dad. But he's doing, like, shit like this when he's talking to him like this. And uh, I'm not trying to get next no, close to you. We're siblings, and this is in Alabama. Um, <laughs> we can't we can't have all no jokes here, guys. I can't I'm not, I can't deal with this shit without having some humor. <laughs> this shit is too dark to not have humor. Um, it. And then you cut to the scene of this same dude with Leonardo DiCaprio as a kid on the set Leonardo of Growing DiCaprio, Pains. DiCaprio, when he was, like... 15, 14, Young, much 15, younger. 13 maybe, I don't know. He was on growing young. pains, he was very yeah, young. Yeah, he was all and touching him. And, and it's, it's, it would, if I saw a random person touching my kid that way, they'd get hit directly in the fucking face. Yeah. Before I even asked him what was happening, it would just be fists flying. And, no, then, and no concern about what happens to me for it. And his dad mentioned him just walking into his dressing room when he was getting dressed and... Helping him put helping on clothes put on that he could figure out himself. And yeah. his dad started to say shit about it, saying, hey, this isn't cool. Yeah. And so this fucking guy starts stalking Drake everywhere he goes, because Drake was in bands, or a band at the time. His yeah. dad had booked a whole concert for him, for him and his band. And the guy shows up. This isn't in the same area. This is six hours away. This guy oh, travels God. to go see this kid. Yeah. Perform. With his buddies. His dad starts saying something, and they go, somebody on the set goes, well, you know, he's gay, maybe you're the problem. Oh, of course. I know a lot of gay dudes that hate pedophiles. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. They don't like being glummed into the same category as guys that touch kids, man. It's not okay to them. They are not that. This kid's 15 at the time. I say kid, he's not a kid now, he's an adult, obviously. He's but like probably 35. He's, he's, or... a li he's a little younger I think than I am. He's just a little bit, he's my yeah. age around there. Yeah, he's he's like your age. I thought he's around my age. He's about thirty-five. And he's close to your guys. Well, he he's a bit younger than yeah. I am. Yeah, I think he's my he's the same age as I am. I think he's yeah. thirty-five. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so something like that. But um, man, there's a reason that um, so what? Oh, I was gonna say there's a reason that you don't see a lot of uh, you know a lot of these these, these old uh, ch child stars. They used to have they have kids now. Yeah. You don't see their kids. It's yeah, not like their shit. parents who no, did it. They yeah. don't because want them to be while their in that. parents were involved with all this creepy shit and knew about because it, because it was okay back to them back in the eighties and stuff like that, they they thought it was okay to be a creepy pedo. And, and, Dr and Drake's dad talks about it. He's like, the only reason this even happened is because he always wanted to entertain. Him and his mom, him and Drake's mom, got a divorce. It was not a good divorce. The dad got custody for the most part, and to spend time with him, this is what they did. And he was around him every waking moment of this shit and his Wouldn't son let anything happen. wanted to be on stage he wanted and, to be an actor yeah so what happened yeah. is what happens with most of these fucking pedophiles is they groomed him he groomed him yep and brian groomed him he groomed him bad and he uh bad horribly <laughs> he, he had this house that he had a bunch of hollywood memorabilia and he had uh in his garage he had like a jungle scene from planet of the apes because the guy was a hollywood fanatic a historian in his you know and that's why Drake clung on him because he was really into the history of Hollywood. He wanted to know about shit like this. Mm -hmm. 
And so he felt like he had that in common. Then suddenly he started realizing, oh, we have all these things in common out of nowhere. I mean, and now he's looking back and he says, well, it's obvious that a lot of this wasn't stuff we had in common. It's stuff that he figured out to get close to me. Um, I, I'm sorry. The, the only reason I keep jumping in is because I, I like I haven't seen it. I'm just kind of getting yeah. quips yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just leaving quips about what I've known and heard from other things to kind of like add into as best I can. Sure. Which is I'm just trying not to lose my train of thought. Um, a lot like unpack. with with him, uh, the the reason Drake Drake was probably also drawn to that situation was because it's like like I said, going back to Nick Silva when that kid got hurt in Clown House when he did that to him. He was threatened by the the bigger head, the dude. I can't remember. He was one of the big directors. Can't remember his name is. He was a producer, whatever. Big name. They told him when he talked that he was never going to make it. He's 12 years old. This yeah. is what's happening to these kids. Uh, Drake when he's over at his house. When he, you know the, the Hollywood, all that shit. It's they have they have a doorway, and they know you want to go into it. Yeah. And they will hold that door open for you. But behind that fucking door is some shit that you could it's never fathom as a thing. child. You yeah. could never fathom. And this is this is during the Amanda show. This is before Drake and Josh. The yeah, Drake this is Josh the Amanda show. show. Yeah. So this is right around the time he's about to make it big. And so he has this. To, to, the reason I brought this up is because you mentioned the clown thing. It's always mm -hmm. a fucking clown involved it's like, somewhere. It's called Clown House. Yeah. This son of a bitch had a autographed, noted picture. Do you want to take a guess who? From who? In his garage. John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. John Wayne fucking Gacy as and the clown. He had letters. From oh, prison. Shot, they were corresponding with each other. Yeah. They'd become friendly while he was in prison. They, they, they were messaging each other, email, like, emailing, like, writing each other. Messed this up is how this guy. sick this fucking yeah. guy is. And as soon as I saw the picture, they showed the picture kind of coming up, I immediately knew what it was. Because they didn't even really hint at it. There's this picture of a clown, and it, I'm like, that's Gacy. That's fucking, <laughs> yeah. that's fucking no, just, that's the man who loved the boys. Thing, and that was that other kid <laughs> that was another kid about knows it, was talking about it. Yeah, <clears throat> with the glasses. I can't remember his yeah. name either. He he apparently avoided most of the physical abuse, yeah. but I mean, all of them got emotional abuse from Dan Schneider for sure. Oh yeah. I do not want to look forward to the, Schneid the Dan Schneider cut of this fucking series, dude. Like, <laughs> like less explosions than Zack Schneider, and it's just as dark, I'm sure, and probably way prolonged. A lot more feet. But we'll get to that. Uh -oh. So this guy, he starts getting in and grooming Jake through all this process, and Drake. starts Drake. Yeah, you said Jake. You said Jake. <laughs> you said, I thought I said Drake. No, you, you said, said Jake. Jake. <laughs> It might be my lisp, guys. I do it's have a speech impediment. Right. No. Oh, okay. Oh. I have a speech impediment. Like sorry. <laughs> I have a speech impediment. Yeah. I didn't realize until I started doing the show that I did. That's why I don't listen to the shows back. So, no, um... I don't either. <laughs> anyway, Drake is getting, you know, groomed by this guy to the point where he's finally like, he's realizing, oh, your dad's getting in the way. He's going to start causing problems. He's like, look. And he approached it like, you know, I've been involved in Hollywood a long time. Parents really shouldn't be involved in managing their kids. And, which is something that these guys do when they want to do something they shouldn't do. So always be leery. Everything's a red flag. If it's a red flag, pay attention. Yeah. Mia Angelou said, if someone wants to show you who they are, believe them. The first thing you should say to your kids if they're ever going to be involved in something that involves like another adult. Yeah, so like he, uh, mentorship, always start off with, if they tell you to keep a secret, you fucking tell me right away. He convinced Jake that his dad was yes. damaging his career. It was absolutely. He convinced Jake that, Drake that, I said Jake that time, Drake that, <laughs> that his dad was damaging his career. And um, so he said, hey, you know, Dad, I want to sit down. His dad actually confronted the dude, much like you would expect yeah. him to. And he said, no, I really do believe that parents shouldn't be involved in managing because it never works out. And he approached it to him like that in a polite way. But it was obviously, you know, a fuck polite, you. Polite, but not. And by that time, way. Drake yeah. wasn't paying attention to what his dad was thinking anymore. He was taking advice of who he thought was someone he could trust. And then his mom got involved. Uh, oh. Drake's mom is one of the worst people in this scene. Whether she, how, what level of her involvement was just neglect is all it was, which is just as just full on yeah, neglect. Yeah. So she, she decided she didn't working. want to drive to pick him up, and so he stayed at the guy's house after separating away from his dad. And it was like an excuse. Oh well, it's so late. I'll just take you home in the morning. Mm -hmm. You could stay over. It's fine. Huh. Blah blah blah. And his mom was like, Oh, I don't feel like driving, basically. Yeah, so she's probably drinking or he something. gets he wakes up to the guy molesting him, and literally um, opens his eyes. And that's what's happening to yeah. him. It doesn't go into what happened exactly. Thankfully, it doesn't start. He he doesn't go into explicit detail. Yeah. I don't need it. You can imagine. Yeah. And it doesn't. That was like the first time, and it ended with the whole oh it won't happen again. I'm sorry, you know. And they tried to repair it, but at this point, 
after this, he starts digressing it and going a little more steady with it. Hey, you know, now he's in his clutches. He's there. His dad's not around anymore. His mom clearly doesn't give a fuck. And so he knows this. And he's a full-on predator. He's starting to do the thing, you know, if you talk bad about me in Hollywood, you might not work anymore because I'm friends with so many people. Yeah. If this comes up, people yeah. might think badly of you kind of thing. What they do. That's what, pe that's what predators do, guys. You see it every day as a predator. The thing is, is uh, uh, a lot of people don't realize, like, um, you can you can tell you. Think of it like this. You can tell your kid, don't open a gate. Close the door behind you. Do they ever listen? Pick up your clothes. Do they listen? No. Because they forget really easily. They don't remember. They don't retain this knowledge. So when your kid goes out into the world and has to deal with other adults, the only thing they remember is that adults are the authority figure in their world. And anything that adults going to tell them, if it's something they want or something they like or something they desire really greatly, because kid, all kids are is emotion and want. So when you get to the point before you're, uh, fuck, I would say before you're 25 years old, you're more liable to just do shit because people tell you. Well, now imagine like a really young kid who doesn't understand, and this person is now telling them, hey, if you don't, and if you tell anybody, it'll hurt me, but it'll also hurt you really badly, because you'll never make it in this industry, people won't want to hire you. Like I said, is they don't even know to pick up their shoes off the floor, for God's sake, 90% of the time. Yeah. They don't remember to do this stuff. They're not going to remember at this point, hey, I need to talk to my, my parent. Hey, I need, to, I need to step back and figure something out now. They're not adults. They're not in this situation. And even adults, look at look at Terry Crews, for God's sake. Terry Crews is a grown-ass man who terrifies me just looking at him, and he got felt up. He got felt up several times. Yeah, that's funny. Like, he got a sexual... He got, he got a sexual... It's not funny. I just... It's, it's not really... Yeah, it's not think funny. About it. It's funny it, to it think about. It's funny he didn't kill somebody. It's funny it happened. But, but yeah. this happens to adults all the time. And now you're putting a kid in this situation. you got to remember... Never. This, this goes back to what I said before. Is is one of the things about never uh, giving a kid a ride in your car without another kid or someone else. You're mm -hmm. teaching them that they never be alone with somebody. Yeah. Never be alone with an adult. That is the key to salvation for your family. Bitch, I don't kids. even trust my reflection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many people have fallen through mirrors? No. Um, people going through. So. <laughs> literally. Into the looking glass. But so this goes on for quite a while with this guy and Drake. And yeah, it, I don't, it lists off. I don't know if they ever said how long exactly. It was a, it was a while. Months it was long. Or any months, amount of time is yeah. too long. But this was a, quite a while. It was at least a couple months or something. It could be one time. It's too fucking many. Um, but yeah. I agree with you. And so, <coughs> I don't just want to talk about this case because there's a lot more that get, this, this. I mean, this yeah. is a lot to unwrap. But we, we still have another episode coming up where he's going to talk more about it. Yeah, we haven't even so. finished the series. The series is still not all the way released yet. Yeah. So. This goes on and on and on, and the kid doesn't know who to talk to. He has no one to talk to about it, and he's just trapped, literally trapped. Yeah, he's stuck. And now Dan Schneider is just, like, in control of his life, basically. Not Dan Schneider. The other guy. Brian Peck. Brian Peck is in control of his life, and he's working for Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider <coughs> allegedly doesn't know anything about it, and I, I tend to kind of think that's probably accurate um, in this particular situation. Yeah. Um... So, it continues to go on, and Drake gets a girlfriend. And so he ends up spending, at the time, he was basically staying at the other guy's house. The, the, the pet guy's house. And he gets a girlfriend, so now he's spending all of his time at his girlfriend's house. And so there's a time where the guy wants to take him to Disneyland. And he's over at his girlfriend's house, and he calls him, and he, he won't answer the phone. He's like, I'm not answering that. He he's not answering him, his phone. And he's calling him. like an obsessive boyfriend would call. Yeah. Like, the kind of guy your girlfriends warn you about. You're like Marky Mark in that one movie back in the day. Kind yeah. of creepy. Hey, don't bring Mark Wahlberg into this. Anyway, so... I, I don't know um, So maybe he was that. No, there was a movie he was in that was... Was it Fear? What's it Fear? Where he played the stalker. Yeah, and the dad oh. was the guy from CSI. Gotcha. Anyway, so... Good movie, actually. He gets thrown out the window, I think. Anyway, nice. spoilers. So, <laughs> I actually like no, Marky but Mark. He just, I like Marky Mark, too. He calls know. him nonstop, basically. Yeah, and then when he doesn't answer his phone, he starts calling the girlfriend's house nonstop. Yeah. And so, the girl's mom finally goes, hey, Drake, can I talk to you in the kitchen? And she goes, what's going on, man? He's like, oh, you know, I'm just, there's some stuff it's starting to get kind of weird, so I'm trying to distance myself. She goes, no 40-plus-year-old man's calling up my 14-year-old daughter's boyfriend at our house nonstop. If yeah. something else isn't going on. So he finally tells her, kind of. And so she 
calls Drake's mom and says, hey, I'm taking him to our family therapist. <laughs> she doesn't give the mom an option. She's like, yeah. he's going to our therapist. So he sent the therapist and basically lied to the therapist because he didn't know. He felt embarrassed, which is totally normal. Yeah. But guys, if you're experiencing this, it's not your fault. You need to understand that. And it's normal to feel gross about it, but you need to tell someone. Yeah. If you're in a... Like, for a number of reasons. And we're not happened to you before. You need to tell someone, for fuck's sake. And we're not talking, you know, because obviously this is an adult show. We're talking specifically that if you've had every, anything in your past, anything like that, and you're just embarrassed by this, realize a lot of people have been fucking through it. Yeah. And a lot of people have accepted it and moved on, but the problem is, is that if you can't accept that, it, it, it can hurt a lot of people's lives. You know, it, it drowns you eventually. This, it's one of those things that you drown yourself in. And this wasn't a one-off event this poor guy went through, man. They list the, the different crimes that he, this guy was being charged with, and oh my God. And Drake, seriously, the gal kind of goes into, asks him, the interviewer, and he goes, I'm, I don't have to get into all that on, on camera with you guys. He said, in an interview or something no, he, like that. he said, imagine Just, the yeah. worst thing that could possibly happen to you Against being you sexually assaulted, and that's what happened. That's what he said. Yeah, all the worst things. That which is really that. scary. Yeah, which is that's a that's a laundry list. And if yeah. you look at just the stuff that showed up in the court, yeah, it's oh my god, disturbing. <laughs> so he finally, <coughs> like you can tell, he physically gets uncomfortable on camera. Like he's oh, like, yeah. yeah. So n- now suddenly he hears some some he was on the set of Amanda Show with uh, the Josh guy, and they're doing mm. some skit together about a shrimp or something. Yeah. And. This guy is executive there with the Dan Schneider guy, and he goes, hey, you were looking for a buddy-buddy comedy. There's your buddies. Take those two. Mm-hmm. And so now Dan Schneider goes, oh, shit. So he goes, hey, Drake, I'm working on a show, and I want you to be part of it. Tell me what you think. And so it's this big break now. Mm-hmm. Oh, now, yeah. fucking, this is what everybody wanted. This is what he wanted. This is what everybody dreams of when they go to Hollywood. Now you're going to be a show, a, a, the main part of a show. The main character. The main character. This is what you want to be. This is where the money is. This is where, where you're famous now. <coughs> and... Uh, the dude, the pet guy, starts trying to force himself onto the set and says, hey, I want to be the dad on this show. Yeah. And finally, Drake had had enough, and he freaked out and called his mom and just unlit on her and told her everything, finally. And so then he got to go sit with all the detectives, and he talks about it. God, reliving all that in front of two strangers in an interrogation room is just horrifying, but it, you know, it had to be done. So dude finally gets arrested. His, they got they record they got him to confess. He confessed it on a phone the call. Phone, yeah. And um, he gets arrested and convicted, found guilty, of a couple of charges. He didn't get all the charges, but he got he got convicted on a couple of them because that's how plea bargains work. You don't get charged with all the things. Yeah. But many 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 people during the sentencing were there. People that Drake knew, and he said it was the people there for him. And the people there for me were me and my mom, and the rest of the side for him was full. Mm-hmm. All these people of, from, like, executives and stuff and powerful people that he knew and faces he recognized were there to support the guy during his sentencing after being found guilty of molesting a child. Hollywood if you tell me the people in Hollywood aren't disgusting swine, <coughs> you are wrong. You are, you are incorrect. And then they showed the actors that wrote that the letters. That supported him. That supported to, him. To be fair, though, the letters of support... They may not have known exactly what he was charged with. They do say that in the documentary. These yeah. people might have wrote letters of support not realizing what the charges actually were. Well, the reality is, like, especially if they were adult actors. They might have thought it was something completely different. Because, I mean, and, and, and when, there, when there was that response, like, it kind of probably goes back to that response when, uh, when people were talking about it, when they said, oh, maybe your problem is that he's gay. That's yeah. probably one of the problems that happened was that they were spreading false lies about it, saying that, well, it's because of this. They're just well, they, well, they might not even that. have known what he got arrested for. They might have heard it was for, like, grand larceny, you know what I mean, or drunk driving or something. You never know. Yeah. And so and some people came out later and said, you know, I wrote that letter not having any idea what it was, and I, I would never have written that, and I would have shut him, shunned him yeah. permanently had I had I any inclination. Because there was some very big-name people that wrote that, people that I was... Alan <laughs> Thicke wrote a letter Alan of Thicke, recommendation. Yeah. Wait a minute. Which is, to me, yeah. I immediately said, well, he must not have known, because Alan Thicke is known to be a really... Really clean guy. Yeah, he must not have known. And not the gal that played his wife wrote a letter because he worked on Growing Pains. The guy, the, the pet guy, did. Yeah. With Leo and, and all, all yeah. Them. yeah. So, you know, it, they might not have been guilty of it, but damn, that must feel dirty afterwards finding out. I couldn't fathom like yeah. 
Yeah. Could you, could you James imagine? Marsden wrote him a really James nice Marsden. letter. They're saying people. One of them said, one lady had the, must have known what he's accused of, because she even said he must have been forcibly tempted. Yes. Into molesting this person. That was so gross. That woman needs to be wood chippered. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, he wood was, chippers. It wasn't Let's get some or... wood chippers in the comment section. There's yeah. a, like, he couldn't there, help yeah, wood himself, or she said something weird like that. Yeah. yeah. It the, was gross. The thing that gets me in, in, in all of this is it's, 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 so, it's so easy to do what they do. Because, it's, it's, it, like I said, it goes back to what we were talking about last week, which is the, the power dynamic. Power trick. Which is they have money, they have power, and they have authority. Because people don't realize how powerful Hollywood is and how deep this rabbit hole goes. The reality is, is we're never going to dig these bastards out because they're... Well, actually, I can't say that's true because if you look at it recently, the Hollywood medium, like television shows and uh, movies, have just started dying. They're dying now because things like yeah. YouTube and TikTok are taking over. They hate those things because those things are literally stealing their audiences away. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the thing is... is, is um, ugh. Sorry, I got ash in my mouth. The... Um, the problem is, is, is the one thing you have benefit of like YouTube is that since they're, so, they're individuals, they're not really like a Hollywood setup, is that you're getting other YouTubers calling people out like, wait a minute, you shouldn't be talking to people like that, and yeah. you shouldn't be talking to your fans like that. So you're getting people calling each other out. So it's a lot better to have a situation where people are watching you all the time. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Charlie at Moist, Moist Critical, by the way, because that's how I first heard about all this. Yeah. He's uh, good. By good the way, phenomenal guy. Phenomenal guy. Um Amazing content, but you know, don't know him as a person, but amazing. The content. problem is, is that there's this, there's this unfortunate allure to fucking Hollywood, which is everybody, nobody is happy with their circle. Let me put it like this: if you have this desire to be famous, it's because you generally you're not happy with the people who love you. You always feel alone, but people like most of the time people don't think of their family as this as as someone with them. Like my family, we love each other, we hang out with each other. We care about each other. We recognize that if shit hits the fan, we can go talk to one another. We also give each other lots of fucking space. Yeah. <laughs> and we will kick each other's ass sometimes that's so stupid. Yeah. But the thing is, is you, until you're happy with yourself and the people around you, you should never try to become famous. Well, that's the thing. Like, because I've... you'll chase love that you should never, like, you'll, because it's, 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 this, it's this false love. You'll chase admiration and this desire to be seen that so many people have in this world of so many people. You want to be seen because you're just... You know, if you're just a barista or you're just somebody working at McDonald's or that, you want to be seen. And yeah. you're willing to just sacrifice so much just to get noticed. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's, it'll kill you. It'll do things to you and it'll, you'll allow yourself to do things. That's why Hollywood gets away with it. Because you will allow things to happen to get seen. And that's the thing. Like, yeah. I, I, I won't sell myself on my laurels for a lot of things. I won't, I won't sell myself on my laurels. I don't want to rest on my laurels. I won't sell myself over stupid shit. Um, I'm unapologetic about what I think and what I say. When I do stand up, I'm very. I'm, I'll be the first. Ask Katie; she's seen me stand up and offend some people. Yeah. You guys have watched the show long enough. You know that I try not to care. I'll try to be a little respectful of things here and there when I'm doing the show here, especially in this situation when it comes to kids and stuff. I, I don't have any. I don't pull punches. It's just you, someone has to stand up for the kids if nobody else is going to do it. Yeah. Um, not that I can do much, but if I can say something, I'm going to say something. Um, so this goes on. Finally, this kid gets freed of this, and this guy gets slapped on the wrist. So he's never going to be free of it. And he actually addresses the people in court. He doesn't address the guy that hurt him. And he says, you know, you guys get to live with knowing you stood here with this sick bastard who's been already convicted of this, and then I get to go home and live the rest of my life knowing that this guy did this to me. Yeah. I'm like, damn! That you couldn't have said a meaner thing to those people in a more honest way, the, in my the, opinion. Yeah. But that's the thing is, it's not mean to. It them. didn't mean anything to them, though. That's they don't it. Care. Didn't mean anything. They to didn't them. care. Yeah. They, there's no way they meant. Now Dan Schneider. So after this happens, it's talked about. Someone actually calls the guy because nobody knows who now because he's John Doe on paper, and it took a long time before it came out. But Dan Schneider eventually said, "Hey man, um, can I talk to you? Was did you have something to do with this whole thing with him?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "You never have to say anything else to me about it." Don't say any more, I get it. And I won't say nothing. And so, to me, it's like, okay, I don't think Dan Schneider really knew, but he knew something was up. I think all the parents knew something was up. If that guy was that close to the kid, where Dan Schneider knew something was wrong enough to go, hey, was this something that happened with you? Yeah. So Dan Schneider goes on to do the Drake and Josh thing and some other shows. He gets in, he starts becoming bigger and movies. bigger. He was in some movies and yeah, he starts, his music and stuff. 
Yeah, he starts getting bigger and bigger. In the meantime, this sick bastard who is convicted now of a child molester gets a job at Disney on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yep, with two young two boys. Two young twin boys who, yep. from what I hear, are not doing so well. Wasn't one of them in one that them show we just watched? Yeah, the Lisa Frankenstein, so I guess no, he's I doing think, okay. I think they're doing okay. <coughs> no, they're doing fine. Well, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't I don't know what happened okay, there. I thought one of them fell no, off the rock. They're actually both I acting. Don't keep up. And, yeah. I hope they're doing well. I hope nothing happens. I don't think they're, like, got into drugs one of the, or any of that. Oh, God, that reminds One of the most heartbreaking parts of the show, aside from all of the damn thing, that it even happens, was Drake's dad at first. Oh, that was he, sad. First yeah. hears about it, J Drake calls his dad, and his yeah. dad at this point had not really talked to him because the mom got involved yeah, and, and he got pushed out and said, hey, they finally got him, dad. And he says, what do you mean? Because he had no idea what was going on. And he told him, and his dad goes, oh my God, thank God they got to him before he got to you because I knew something was going to happen. And he n did not tell his dad at that point, and his dad kept not, not knowing about it for a very long time. Dad and his dad did, was the only one that actually gave a shit about that kid, in my opinion, and tried. The only one, one that did that patched up. Happen. They did. They're good, they're good now. <laughs> they're working on it. They're better now. Yeah. I can't. So, I can't. I can't fathom uh, what it takes to be that kind of person. What? What? I no. It I, doesn't take anything. He's I, can, I can. I can. I can fathom it. I can. I can think exactly how what it takes. It's. It's. You can imagine to be evil. You don't do it. It's this. Well, not quite. Because the thing is, is to be what they are. To be somebody like that, you have to push yourself, and you have to you have to be absolutely okay with taking something innocent and destroying it. Yeah, you have to be absolutely okay with ruining somebody. And this goes into the next. Actually, not just why you said that. Many people ruining lives. That goes into my next point. Yeah, yeah. with what the show is getting to, I think what they're actually going to, I think that what the show is actually leading to is that point. They are literally trying to make it normal in the eyes of people and children seeing this stuff on television. Mm -hmm. Kids see this shit on TV, they think, oh, it's totally normal now. I saw it on TV. And if you don't think they're using these shows to pervert, to pervert your kids' lives and mindsets, you are incorrect. This proves it. 100% proves it. Says what I've been saying for many, 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 many fucking years. Well, Since I was a kid watching some of this shit. The difference is my parents in the 80s said, hey, life is fucked up. Things are fucked up. This is what this is. This isn't normal. You can laugh at it. It ain't right. That's why I'm able to laugh at shit that's super offensive to little snowflakes now. Because it's funny when it's funny and it's disgusting when it's disgusting. When you have a kid covered in peanut butter and a dog licking him clean, there's something wrong with you. When you have foot fetish and have to have little kids' feet on the air at all times, Dan Schneider, I'm looking at you. There's when something you have, fucking wrong with when you. When you have a young teenage girl sucking on her toes. Yeah. And going backwards over the bed and pouring water on down her over her face and in her mouth yeah and making it and look like a certain, potato and getting trying to milk a potato or trying to juice or a potato whatever i wonder if i can juice a potato katie go ahead and do the thing that shoot no not and don't don't really do that uh, no, that's the other thing too one of the writers one of the female writers and they traded these females like crap on this. I'm just saying females, ladies. I, I don't know what you want to fucking hear. I don't care. Girl. The gals. Girls. Well, it's easier to say female writers versus male writers. Oh, I thought you were talking about the kids. No, on the, yeah. the writers for the show. The women. He made one of them yeah. act out, getting plugged from behind anally while she read a scene that she wrote. Dan Schneider made her do yeah. this in the writing room. And that is fucking demoralizing. That's humiliating and disgusting behavior. That poor lady. That said, there's not been one time that we've been drinking together and goofing around with a bunch of our friends that we haven't bid Katie to go, hey, do this. Because <laughs> it's funny. It's out of place. It's not a work environment situation, yeah. and she knows it's going to happen. We do the same thing to our guy buddies. The difference is, in Dan Schneider's case, he only did it to the women. So, gross on you, Dan. Gross on you. Very gross. Um, Writers Guild got involved. These two gals got fired which I think is disgusting. They weren't getting paid the same. What I mean the same is they got to split the salary for the writer position. And he wanted the one to work free for 11 weeks. Yeah. And so she finally sued his ass. Good for you. I am yeah. so glad. I hope you and got very rich. Nothing happened. He was still He still, working yeah, he's still, still moving right along for yeah. quite a while. So he gets <clears> on with the Zoe 101 thing and one of the other scenes. This guy... Dan Schneider is the sicko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he might not have physically touched anyone directly, although it's well, questionable about it's yeah. questionable about Amanda Bynes. Yeah. 
there's there's some speculation that has gone on that they had a little more uh, of an intimate re relationship. There was a lot of posing and touching in ways that were very inappropriate. With other girls, too. The hot tub scene with him and Amanda Bynes was kind yeah, of awkward. That was mm -hmm. weird. Um, there was a scene when he had the kids of the, the new cast of all that, the newer cast of all that, talking about how he's a god. We must do whatever. We must please Charlie's them. Charlie's Angels the, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, really creepy shit. Um, it, it might seem innocent until you look at all of it on together. And then he was like that all over the place. And he became just a abhorrent to work with. Yeah. And treated everybody like shit on set. He was a dictator. And just an all, all around delightful piece of shit, basically. A horrible person all I, around. Just, 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 just the, the, here's the thing though. It, here's, here's the thought that people should hold in their heads real quick in case you think it's just uh, directors and producers and, and shit like that. There are camera crew, there are writers, there are lighting crew, there are hundreds of people that work on these shows, all adults, who are watching this take place. Yeah. And they don't do shit. And Disney hired a convicted sex offender to come work for them again after he was convicted and it was all over the news. And they will always do so. And they said, oh, well, there wasn't a background check in... It was all over the fucking news, Disney! You guys have your assholes everywhere! They went on... Disney, the same people that went after South Park for the look Disney at, episode. That was doing exactly what Disney's doing, they accused him. Look at, look at shit like Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> fucking bullshit. She, she literally had a, a, a tweet that she deleted which said that sometimes she when I'll open crazy. a supermarket or something for uh, Harvey Weinstein to let me use the Miramax jet. And I'm just like, so basically you knew... You knew what he was doing. It goes back to Ricky Gervais at the Oscars or whatever. It was Academy Dude, you, Awards you, or whatever. They tried, to, they tried to screw over, what was his name? Um, Russell Brand. Oh, Russell Brand's awesome. They tried to grab him and say that he did a bunch of inappropriate stuff years ago. Yeah, but Russell Brand will say, of course I did. I'm Russell Brand. Whereas Louis C.K. will apologize for consensually masturbating in front of people with consent. I'm still mad about that. You fucking throw me under the bus. <clears throat> I just the only I, reason I do comedy is to get laid, bastard. It's it's I, I don't watch movies or TV shows anymore because I just you know I, I'm so disgusted with Hollywood. It's like I, I don't want to watch your movies or see your fucking TV shows because I know what you people do. Like you you aren't okay. You you don't deserve to have positions like this. You don't deserve to be seen by people. No, there's a position they can assume in jail. <laughs> yeah, like that one dude. <laughs> so it goes on though, and it's. Back to what I was saying about the overall effect. These shows get kids used to seeing this shit. Kids are used to... like I remember Rocco's Modern Life and Beavis and Butthead and things like that. My mom going, that's really inappropriate. Ren and Stimpy, you shouldn't be... I'm not letting you watch that. You know, guess what, Mom? You're going to fall asleep at some point, and we have cable. Yeah. You and know what's ironic? Yeah. The exactly. least inappropriate show was probably South Park. <laughs> no, they're just the most honest. South Park was <laughs> honest mom. They weren't up. doing anything. It was an adult comedy show. Because Trey Parker and Matt Stone were two college dudes that made a fucked up Greek Christmas card for people that came big, and then they decided to make a show about it because they had fun fucking with people. Because they were these adult adolescents. Yep. And right. they just they ran with it and they fucking owned it and they did the best and they start now. South Park is the the voice of reason for this country now, comparatively. I don't know how South Park became the voice of reason. Like it's it weird. It did. Because some pe sometimes you have to have something so <coughs> absurd to show the honesty of what's going on around you. And so South Park is disgusting, but also so is real life. And it's, it's yeah. at least they're being honest about being funny about it and trying to look at it like, hey, fuck you, I know what you're doing. So, Whereas these guys are trying to hide <coughs> it because they want to stay in the shadows. You were saying, yeah. So he went on to do the Zach and Cody show, right? And then. No, he, he didn't. Did he do Je uh, Drake and Josh? No, no. Dan Schneider did Drake and Josh. Okay. Brian Peck went on to the do The convicted that. pedophile got hired Zach on for Disney. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah. No, After he, he got out like of prison. He a fucking peach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was in prison for uh, uh, not even two months. years. Yeah, not even two years, that son of a bitch did. Yeah. Drake's whole life got thrown into a wood chipper but, so this guy could go free, basically. Let's, yeah. let's just, let's just equalize that real quick. There are people currently serving uh, like 30 to 40 years in jail for carrying some marijuana. There's people in life <laughs> prison in California for having too much marijuana on them at one time Yeah. back in the day. Wow. Yeah, but you can totally assault a child, though. That's cool. Yeah, you can hurt kids, though. We don't, California don't mind that. Yeah, we're cool. Uh, as, long as, you, as long as you do that, kind so, of cool. And that's the thing, like, all this shit, come on, so the Me Too movement came on, and that started empowering people to fucking start talking about shit. Right around this time. 
And that's when the, the gals that were writing for the show decided they were going to sue. And that's when there was this one girl that worked on, what was it, uh, the one that, the iCarly or whatever? Jeanette McCurdy. Yeah, Jeanette yeah. McCurdy. She wrote a book wrote called a book. I'm Glad My Mom's Dead. Yeah, I'm glad my mom died. Yeah, I'm glad mom, my mom died. I guess her mom was really abusive. And... That girl got some of the worst treatment. And Dan Schneider, she writes about him without saying, she won't say his name. Yeah. She's like so met, she's so hurt by it, she won't even say the fucker's name. She just says the showrunner. Yeah. And she treats the showrunner like he's a villain, like she writes it, like he's a villain in fucking Orwell. In an Orwellian well, he is novel. A villain. And she it's correct. Yeah. And she she even straight up says, I'm fucked up because of this stuff. I mean look at Amanda Bynes, look at Lindsay Lohan, look at I guess Lindsay Lohan's cleaned her shit up lately or something. I don't she know. She looks great. Yeah, she's doing great. Britney she had a Spears. baby and, or she's pregnant. She's think. fucking nuts. Dude. Britney Spears is a mess. Britney Spears yeah. part of Britney Spears' problem was other human beings that weren't involved. Paparazzi fans. Also her parents. Her parents were <laughs> shit. Yeah. Fucking horrible. Yeah. Well look at like parents are a big problem. Amanda Bynes' dad is one of the creepiest motherfuckers. Yeah. He and Dan Schneider worked hand in hand to sculpt Amanda Bynes into whatever was going to be talent on television. He used his daughter as a way for him to make money, and I have zero compassion or respect for that guy. They were like that's a that's a good choice. And what of people. sucks is you look Nicole at Nicole Amanda Bynes' talent when she was younger. If she would have just stuck with comedy and not so been thrown funny. into that, she was she was naturally a funny person, yeah. and now she is just. Thankfully, she's opening a nail salon. Fucking, that's where she's at now. A nail salon. She's not. She's messed up. I shouldn't and say it's not messed. her fault. She's messed up. Look at, she's look traumatized. At, look at people like Macaulay Culkin. <clears throat> he's cleaned up. He's doing great. Oh, yeah, he's doing great now. But yeah. but he was told her. His family literally like robbed him of all his fucking money. He was money. on meth and stuff look, for a while. I saw that dude sniff coke of a stri- of a midget stripper. Let's not get into that. That's not really the right. Culkamania. That's not really the right time for that. No, no that, that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. No, I did trick you with that <clears throat> on the show. Though. I think you did. I, I know I did. But this I, is on the show. Kind of a serious show. Yeah, I can't approach this with total seriousness. I just can't. It's because my brain doesn't. This work is that way. such a dark thing. It's like what, the, the, like what? Here's it's the gallows piece. humor, guys. The thing is, like with, with the gallows humor, especially, it's like there's what do you do? What can you do? I think that's like the biggest yeah. thing that people have when you look at these documentaries is you can see these, but it's it's like Epstein. Like I said, it's like it's like Epstein. It's out of your mind tomorrow because you're gonna forget it tomorrow when it's not on the air. It's it's big now, but give it a couple of weeks and you'll forget about it. And it'll, it'll go, it'll, it'll whisk away. Because here's the thing. And the reason that happens is because you can't do shit about it. Oh, you can. <laughs> no, you, you can. can. A little extreme. What? I'm not going to tell you what, but it's a little extreme. But the, thing is, could. but the thing is, it's like, not there's, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There's this, there's this, 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 hypothetically. there's this helplessness as an adult that really sucks. Especially like now that we're, we're coming of age, you know, we're, we're older now. We're coming into the age where we have, you know, kids. We're worried about what their future is going to be like. And you got to, you know, it's it sucks to look at, you know, all these kids who went through it and realize that there are parents out there that are willing to sell them. And there are people who are just willing to let this shit happen because you can't, yeah. you can't stop people. You can't stop people from going to see movies because they're not paying attention. They don't give a shit. You got, you got fair weather people who will, who will never, I didn't know about this fucking documentary. I didn't know anything about this. Yeah. And I, I'm, 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 like I said, I'm, I only, I'm terminally online. I literally only know about yeah. it because of uh, Moist Critical. Yeah, I only know about it from that exact same thing. I saw, like, a, a snippet from it, and I moved on because I wasn't even, I didn't know what it was. I was just like, I'm not interested in watching this right now. I don't know. And then you contacted me, like, hey, there's a whole documentary. I thought it was just, like, a, a small thing that was said about it. It's, it's four hours. <laughs> I, didn't realize <laughs> it was, over I didn't realize it was a documentary. I just thought it was, like, a small snippet. It's a I small, saw the snippet, and then yeah. he said something else. Yeah. And so I was like, eh, I don't really want to watch this right now. And I moved on because this stuff this just pisses me off. But the thing is, it's like there's this 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 reality that the only way you stop this shit is by stopping it. We can boycott Bud Light. We can boycott the shit out of Kellogg's. But can we boycott Hollywood that literally yes. just has pedophiles running rampant in there? I, I mean, no, it is rampant. Like, dude, how, what are the odds of two convicted sex offenders on one set? But. Hold on, let me let me let me let me put this into fucking perspective. Disney and Nickelodeon and all these corporations know this happens. They hire hire pedophiles. Nobody boycotts. Disney goes against a political party and has their own opinion, and all of a sudden people can fucking boycott out the ass, yeah. but no one can show up for the children. Does anyone show up for Epstein? Did anyone show up for the list? No. Silence in the fucking theater as soon as that came up, because you don't give a shit. People don't was, give a it shit. It was so funny, like. Speaking of that, it was funny because I was trying to trying to find out where to watch this documentary. 
because Katie had started watching it before I did. I think I was like literally trailing one episode behind you until you took a break, and then we caught I up. I took a break. I had to take a break from it. It was too heavy. Because we binged it last night, my wife and I and Katie at her place, and we were both binging it pretty much at the same time. And I was like, at first, we, we tried to find where it was at because I didn't want to pay for the Hulu Live. It's like, no. I already pay for Hulu. I don't want to pay for Hulu Live on top of it. And so I'm like, where would I get it? So I went to look at Paramount Plus. It's not there. It's on everywhere else stuff. And so I'm watching, like, it's weird. I was still watching, like, it's weird it's not on Paramount Plus. We look over, it's a, the big Paramount gates where Disney, where Nickelodeon Studios are. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, that, that explains it. <laughs> well, well, that explains that. I'm dumb. Egg on my face. I, I totally should have put that fucking yeah. together. I mean, I like a puzzle piece that just bit. It just, it just, it just, it strikes me every time I, I, I look at that shit when I'm just like, like when Epstein happened, people forget about it. I still post about it as much as I can to try and, to bring it back up in people's memory. The thing is, is people just, they, they don't want, they don't want to see this because this is what we like to call a nightmare scenario, which is, it's like, it's like being in war. War, people are all about, let's go to war. Let's do war. You don't know what the fuck war is. So here's, here's the other flip side about this whole thing that gets me. Here's the juxtaposition I want you guys to think about. One of the many. Uh, so Drake gets in trouble. He gets in trouble for inappropriate text messages with a minor later on in life. You hear about that all over the news. <clears throat> I heard about that. Mm -hmm. I had not heard about him being a victim of this piece of shit peck. So we go on, we take a victim as a child, and we ignore what happened to him because he did something that almost went down the same path. And he ended up doing one thing, got busted, changed started seeking help um got off drugs you know he still he still talks about battling it a little bit because yeah. he was heavy into drug use what else he gonna cope with i that? also heard that the girl that he was texting lied about her age and as Which soon as possible. he found out her age he cut it off but he did way. he got in trouble for it he admitted to yeah. doing it so but he, he cut it off as soon as he found out and i don't know That's i don't remember I that part of it but um he did say yeah. that, hey i shouldn't have done this and i i, I wanted to and he started seeking help and he started getting counseling for it yeah which is what you should do if you've been going through something like this. Seek help. It's There's help for a reason. Yeah. You know, and I'm not justifying what he did there, but it becomes, you know, we're going to pay attention to that all over the news because that was big news. Oh, he DUI. Oh, this. Oh, he's and doing drugs. Like, he's a piece of shit. Man. No one was talking about why or what happened. Yeah. Well, this guy that hurt him is still working at Disney making money. I don't know if he's still there now. I, I don't know what happened to that guy since. I, I'm looking, I should have looked up an update. I'm hopefully he fell into a wood chipper. I guess I could look it up and see. Or was, fell in with help would be the best way for that to happen, personally, in my opinion. But first. So, you know, to boil it down, this is just scratching the surface of this entire ordeal. Because there is so much more of this going on. It is so much deeper ingrained in Hollywood. And like Jack was saying, you don't see these child kids, child star kids having their kids grow up in Hollywood as much anymore. You used to see that, but their parents would tell them when they were growing up as child stars, hey, there's creepy people out there I had to work with. Watch out for them. There was generations of people that were warned about Harvey Weinstein, who had no real penis, but some weird alien genitals thing going on. Yep, it's in the, it's in the court papers. He did not have a regular um, penis. He, you guys didn't know that? No. He had like a mutated wiener. Creepy. You know who else had a mutated wiener? Who? Adolf Hitler. I knew that. I heard his that. pee hole was yeah. in the bottom of his wiener. That's weird. Yep. It's not where your urethras are supposed to go. What? <laughs> maybe, maybe natural. Don't throw away. Pee in my shoes. I'm gonna get them. That's cool. That's the worst German accent ever. So oh anyway, um, that's the beginning of this entire thing, guys. So watch the documentary. Expect more. The fifth one comes out. I want to say on April seventh. And it's depressing. Don't watch it if you're having a good day. Yeah. Um, don't watch it if you're having a really bad day either. Uh, you know, but, but do pay attention and take what you learn from it and apply it to your real life. Because this shit happens outside of Hollywood, too. Uh, there was a guy locally who my sister warned people about for years. Who turned out to be one of the worst pedos in this county. And a friend of mine is actually the arresting officer. To the point where this guy had framed things that he shouldn't have had on his wall. Thankfully, he died in prison. Sadly, it was from his health and not from the oh. rape. No. You, was abused. you know who um, it was. No, I, I know who that was, but I also know I went to school with someone. I found a thing that says Peck. where he's at now, or what happened to him. You want me to read it? Yes, please. Okay. 
<clears throat> After serving his sentence, Peck was released from prison in 2005. A year later, he was hired by Disney Channel to work on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, starring Dylan and Cole Sprouse, where he did voiceover, voiceover work for three episodes, but had no interaction with the cast or crew on set. The outlet reports that he was immediately terminated after Disney Channel learned of his conviction and his voiceovers were replaced. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Even after getting terminated from Disney Channel's Sweet Life in 2006, Peck continued to appear in a variety of projects, including 2008's Bedtime Stories, Adam Sandler movie, Ooh. 2015's Freak Freaks of Nature, which I don't know what that is, and the 2012 series Anger Management. Huh. His last role was in 2018 for a miniseries titled Animal Showdown. Today, he reportedly resides in Los Angeles. Weird. Hmm. So. And he was, and he had to be um, convicted as a sex offender. Registered. Yeah. Registered. Yeah. So, no, guys, if you, if you see this mincing boy hunter, hungry pedophile, just know he's still out and about, living free. Lives in L.A. Lives yeah. a free life in L.A. Living it up, <laughs> hanging out. Probably, probably has a lot of money. Probably jerking off to, you know. Yeah. Pictures of clowns. Fucking clowns and little Gacy's. boys. Probably rubbing Gacy's correspondences all over his face. <laughs> no, this no. is the worst kind of people, man. But there are <clears throat> people in your everyday life, so watch your kids closely. It can be a, a scout leader. Uh, a buddy this, of mine yeah. was, uh, he's a good guy, not the buddy that did it. Uh, he didn't do it. it was, this guy wasn't my buddy that did it, but his roommate. They were all serving at a church together, working in the music and this kid was like, this guy was like a youth pastor, very young guy, uh, I think 18, 19. And he was, turned out, the FBI kicks in my buddy's door at their apartment and raids them, hog ties them, not really, but like cuffs them, slams them face into the wall. The pervert wasn't even there. They went through all the shit, took the computers from the whole house, raided the whole fucking house. And everybody had to sit through it, not having any idea what was going on. He had no idea this dude that was higher up in the church was, was uh, doing shit he shouldn't have done with a kid. Wow. So it can be anyone. And my friend had no clue. Because he wouldn't have had anything to do with the guy that he did. I know, I'm know i still friends with the guy that this is day, and he's a really solid guy. And He looks back, I'm sure, and goes, how did I not see this coming? And the fact is, sometimes you can't. Well, there's, you know, I went to school with someone who got arrested out of this area. Uh, he got he got arrested. I don't, I don't know what he what's still going on with him now, but he got arrested for the same thing. He got busted for it. Dude, there was a guy and... that grew up a couple houses down from us. <laughs> a few houses down from us that got busted years later with yeah. his his girlfriend's kids. And I'm like, I was calling people like, did you see a whole boy guy? For you know what I'm talking about? I, I I'll tell you afterwards. I'm not gonna say his name, but but no, I mean I went to school with this dude, and I knew he was creepy from the fucking jump. Like he he just he's just creepy, and I don't like I knew people who knew him. They said he, they were friends with him, and he seemed he was a nice guy, and stuff like that. I was like, nah, dude. There's something weird about they're, him. They're, 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 cause he he we, we went to school together, and he was creepy as shit. He was this big dude. He was a little taller than me. He was bigger than me, but I was a year older than him. And he comes out, and he he comes out of class. And he like uh, with my ex-wife, we were sitting there because she was still in school. And he comes up behind her, he touches her on the shoulder, like. Oh, hey, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Like, really soft. It just, I don't know. My hackles went up, and I was dating at the time, and I stopped, and I was like, what's going on there? And she goes, he won't leave me alone. He's like, he's, she's creeping me out. And I'm like, I hey, I remember this. It says something, and I, I turn around, and I get up, and I'm like, no, nah, this ain't going to happen no more. And I fucking, <laughs> I busted open the door, and I come rushing out. I, like, I shout his name at him, and he stops, turns around, looks at me, and, goes, <gasps> and I'm like, don't you ever touch her again. And I'm like, if she doesn't want to talk to you, you don't fucking talk to her. And he's like, Okay, man. Okay. I'm sorry. And I'm like, don't ever fuck with me. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And like I said, he's bigger than me, but he fucking backed down immediately. And nice. that doesn't mean anything. That was a sign immediately to me. I'm like, if this guy backs down and he's bigger than me, I'm like, there's that, that's that's yeah. coward dog shit. I'm yeah, like, but you had uh, uh, quite the reputation of causing yeah, destruction when you were in that m mode yeah, when you were younger. I kind of had a bad reputation. But no, but he, I don't know. I, I've never done that to, like, when I was in that school, because it was uh, Zoe, yeah. I never, I never fought in that school. I, I had, I was cool with everybody. Well, there was one time, and the cops had to call, and you fought off three cops. But there was this, but, but this one time, this guy did something, and I don't know why. It was the only time I've ever done that to anyone, and I wasn't even in class. I, I had graduated. I was just visiting my, uh, or visiting my ex, and I was just talking to her, and I don't know why. I just got so pissed. I was just like, you off, yeah. like, I don't know. No one's ever bent me, so, like, fucking made me pissed off by that before and I was yeah. just like I don't know why but I gotta stop this shit right the fuck now yeah that's your spider <clears throat> senses were tingling 
So it's, well, you know, like just yeah. keep an eye out, guys. Watch out for your kids. Somebody has to. It might as well be you. They're your kids. Protect your kids, please. And if anything happens, call the police. Yeah, I don't care if it's a teacher, a student aide, another student that just graduated. If I, even a student of the same age can be this person, man. You got to be careful. You got to watch what your kids do. Like, we've kept our kids from social media. Oh. Um, our kids, our daughters have Snapchat. My, do my wife has access to all of their Snapchats. Let me, they let me. use it as a way, hold on, they use it as a way to contact my wife. Every time they send or receive something, my wife gets a copy of it on her phone immediately. So we know what's going on at all times. They don't have Facebook. They had Musical.ly back in the day <coughs> for about a week before I found out what it was. And that went the way of the, you know, the dodo. The dodo. And uh, now it's TikTok. <coughs> they do not have. Mm -hmm. But um, I was going to say something, actually, for that school that I went to. They, let, me, let me explain something. It, it could be anybody. There are creepy bastards everywhere. There was a teacher that I had that was an English teacher. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> um, there were two English teachers in my school. I'm still not going to say them because I don't like either of them. But um, <laughs> they're both douchebags. One's a gross guy. The other but, one I just don't like enough to make him famous. He's an asshole. <laughs> but um, I, I was sitting in this class. I had friends. I had, I had friends. Uh, in the AmeriCorps room, there was, the, the, there, were, there was a group, like a Spanish chick, a couple of Native girls. And I was friends with them, and we'd always just ch hang out like lunch and talk. And then I stopped showing up to that room one day, and I was like, this is weird. And I was like, okay. So I just sat down at my normal spot, and she came and talked to me, hey, you want to come hang out? We're, we're hanging out in this classroom. And I said, oh, okay, that's weird, all right. So I went over there, and the teacher was really weird with me in the room, and these three girls, and then they started talking to me. And they were talking about like how we reminded them of David Bowie and all this stuff, and they all had like huge crushes on David Bowie for some reason. And... The next thing I know, they said something to me, and to this day, I still feel bad because I did not fucking say something to anybody. But she said something about how he would give them a ride home, and he took them to the gym, and they hung out with him outside of school, and I was yeah. just like... <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff started to connect, because they would also like sit in the miracle room, and they'd talk about like the things they did sexually, like outside of like boyfriends and stuff, and I'm still confused, because I knew these girls pretty well. They were friends of mine, hmm. and I, I was like... I know you don't have a boyfriend, and I know none of you have had any recently, because we all talk pretty a lot, and then we're all very open about things, because we were friends, and it was really weird to me. And now, like, all that stuff, like, clicked as I got older, but it did not, at that point, seem weird to me. Yeah. And that's what you got to watch out for. It's like, I had a teacher who was supposed to be, like, I, it could have been purely innocent. But why was this teacher hanging out with students outside of class, right. taking them to the gym, no. giving them rights home, one-on-one right. -on -one time, things like that? He was being a creep. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's creepy. A creep. That's, For sure. That, so my wife's working at a school. I'm not going to say what or what she does there. Um, just the other day, I'm going to say it was Friday or Thursday, um, one of the students is having a birthday party and wants to invite this substitute teacher, this younger guy. He's like... I'm sorry, I really can't go to your birthday party. <laughs> she really wanted him to go. And she's, she got kind of offended by it. And my wife and one of the other people that worked there had to sit down with the girl and explain why. <laughs> like, it's not appropriate for a single young man to be attending a, you know, a yeah. young kid's birthday party. It's, it doesn't, it, that's not an image we need or anything that, you know. So kudos to that guy for not being a, a creeper. But. And for not just, but also teaching them a very valuable lesson, sense. which is it's huh. not okay for a, a, a you know, someone, like a single person to be coming to a child's birthday party. Yeah. Like an adult to be spending time with, in that way, with a child. It's like, that's not what it's for. Yeah, like, there's, an, there's, no, <clears throat> guys, there's a, a big difference. My daughter and my birthday are like a day apart, so we do yeah. a birthday party where it's a big barbecue for everybody. So my friends come, and then the rest of the family come. My buddies all hang out in the studio, and we smoke cigars, and, you know, I used to drink beer, I don't anymore. And we barbecue, and the kids all play somewhere else. So it's a little different, but, you know, it's not a standalone birthday party where it's like, yeah, it's really tie. annoying when they come up and try to talk to us. Because yeah, they're just like, hey, children. Children like, go that way. This is yeah, grown get up. Out land. Of here. It's yeah, so you're about, yeah. You have friends to entertain you. It's not my job anymore. Go. Yeah. I'll take up the tab tomorrow when it's back to being parent. <coughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, yeah, so do watch that, that docuseries. Let us know what you guys think. Um, if you Don't share your stories. But if you are a victim and you need to reach out, you don't know who to call. Okay, I don't want to, but I will help you find someone if you need to. Email us at vanishinggates at gmail.com, and I will come up with a list of people that can help you. I don't want to well, want the details. You can just find the I don't want the yeah, details. Yeah. I don't need to know who you are. Just, you know, the, the base details, and I'll do what I can to help you find some help. 
But there's law enforcement. You can find it online for free, so go there. They're, they're paid to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys see something, say something, man. Somebody, if there's kids, don't expect them to stand up for themselves all the time. If you see something that doesn't look right, it's probably something going on. It, 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 let me put it like this. I'm not saying be worried about everybody. I'm not saying there's ghosts behind you. If, if something looks wrong, approach it and say something about it. Because if it looks wrong to you and it doesn't look wrong to some, like, say, this teacher, for instance, if it was all perfectly normal, but if anyone just said, hey, that looks really su- suspect, he might have been like, oh, oh, and then changed what he was doing immediately, not realizing that he shouldn't have been doing that shit in the first place. Well, it's, He it's, just thought he was being friendly and It's helpful. like the old adage goes, Which you know, if it not. looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably Jeffrey Epstein sex-slaving young girls on an island. And not killing himself. And not killing himself. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching Vanishing Gates. Once again, I'm Jay, and these are... The Goobreeze Jay. Katie Cat. Uh, thanks for watching, and good luck getting that scrubbed out of your brain. Good nightmares. Oh, good. Bye. It's going to be a night. <laughs> yeah. Bye.